Dr. Jonathan Tripp is joining us in studio this morning. We call it Better Health with Tripp Family Medicine. He joins us, or he has someone else from the office occasionally come in, sometimes Russell Singleton, and kind of it's a musical chair situation right. at the and, office. And we'll probably have more coming in. We have a, a new full-time physician assistant coming up from uh, University of Texas, El Paso in about a uh, week and a half. And we have a new uh, nurse practitioner that's with us part-time. So you might hear from, uh, you know, a variety of voices I already knew some of this because there were some other medical professionals here yesterday, and it's a small community. Yeah. So they were telling me about the uh, the new staff that you have. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I'd, I'd be curious to hear what they said. <laughs> All good. All very, very good. It's fun. Uh, in fact, uh, we had a couple of folks here talking about Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and I know your office has been uh, deeply involved in that, too, as well. Uh, yeah, we. Uh, I had a patient that, uh, truly tough old cowboy, you know, smoker, the whole deal, and uh, one day I walked in on a, it was a Tuesday, so that's why I remember this. But I have a uh, kind of a golf shirt, pullover, pink and white striped uh, golf shirt. And uh, his response to me was, what is it, tough enough to wear pink Tuesday? So pretty much every day in October is tough enough to wear pink. Absolutely. Uh, keeps people, uh, keeps it in their memory. We've got 49, it's 834. Also, Bill Colley with you handling the telephones for the doctor this morning. And you're listening to News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Wellness. You're talking about overall wellness today. And as you were pointing out, we, we, we sort of wrapped up with a few points about that uh, in, in the last get together. Uh, but you've got a lot of material today just to talk to people about how, you know, you want to be, as you grow older, you want to feel really good. And there's ways to maintain that. There is. And, you know, it's fun because wellness has such a broad use. You know, you see this wellness. In fact, uh, one of the, uh, practitioners or whoever you met with there yesterday was from the Wellness Tree, which is a free clinic for uh, people that are underserved population in the area. Awesome uh, facility, and they do great work for us. There's uh, oftentimes you'll see the word wellness used in clinics that have multiple services. And so, you know, the idea is to say wellness is a broad term. It's used, but it's tough to get a grip on what that really is. And uh, so I uh, was asking some of the staff just before I came in, I said, you know, what what questions would you have? What would you like to hear about? And so some thoughts came up. Well, what about heart health? And what about um, exercise? And what about, you know, high meeting and things like that? Those are all great. And then the feedback really came, and that was the thing that makes chubby people matter than anything is, you know, hearing and seeing the ads of... Uh, Oh, I shouldn't use particular programs, but the tough, uh, tougher than you are workout exercise programs that you can buy on disc or whatever. And, or, you know, the recommendation of is from the person who works out, you know, 12 hours a day. Oh, you can be just like me in 20 minutes a day, which really isn't quite the truth. So what I want to do is hit this topic from a point of view of where are we now? Where are you now? And what can I do to get started, or what can you do to get started in doing something that's a little better? It doesn't mean you go from, uh, you know, 50 pounds overweight or 100 pounds overweight to a 6% body fat level that, you know, you could be a bodybuilding competition, man or woman. That's not what I'm striving for. I do have some of those patients, and believe me, they make me look bad. So uh, I do appreciate those that, that go to those efforts. But at the same time, what I find with most of our health issues is a little bit of weight loss goes a long ways to reducing all the things that threaten your life. Now, I'll go back to my earlier smoking comment. That is the single biggest thing that I can get somebody to, to quit to improve their health more than anything else I can do. It reduces risks of your heart disease, cancer, um, things that really threaten your life, short term and long term, and your quality of life. So. Anybody out there that really is serious about quitting smoking, call our office. Let's get you in and let's talk about it. I have some, well, a variety of ways that we can help with that. There's medication. There's uh, programs. In fact, uh, often an employer will have a smoking cessation program. So there's my pitch for a smoking cessation. That's the single biggest thing as a physician I can do to improve somebody's wellness. I was going to say, you know, and I, I just, it's anecdotal, but I see it in the workplace. When I first started in the radio business 30 years ago, the number of people who smoke, uh, you know, as a percentage seemed to be pretty high around the office, maybe not 50%, but high. But today, uh, it's, we have, it, it's a rare person that smokes on, on the staff. And, and I, I, I 
see that, and I, I think that perhaps that message has gotten through to a great deal. To a large percentage of the population, it sure has. Uh, it's impressive how many people still smoke with all the information we have. And it's still the same reasons that people start. You know, they're starting at young age. They're being persuaded that you know this is uh, this will make you more mature. This will make you cooler. Um, and so we get started. And some say, you know, I don't know why I ever started. I just was you know, out hanging out with friends at a bar, and I was 21, and everybody else was smoking while they're drinking. I thought I'd try it, and wish I never had. So it's it's not a condemnation on my part that people smoke. But the truth is. is there's still a pretty fair percentage, probably closer to 20% of people that actually smoke. We just don't see them because they're not allowed to smoke in the workplace. They're not allowed to smoke at the airport or the hospital. Um, so now you have uh, rules like in our state, it's 25 feet from the entrance of a public building. You have to be that far before you can smoke. I was in Chicago a couple weeks ago, and their rule is 15 feet. Well, I tell you what, I hated going out of the hotel where I was because why? You can't smoke anywhere else in the hotel. So you have, you know, clumps of smokers near every door. It's a little windy there, too, and that means the smoke travels. Yeah, it definitely travels. So anyway, <laughs> because we brought up the employer uh, cessation program, I want to shift over to what we're doing with a number of uh, the larger corporations in the area on helping support their wellness programs. Some companies have them, some don't, and they vary in what they actually do, what they provide. Uh, our most recent one, we just kicked off with uh, independent meats, is, uh, or as you'd know, Falls brand name, they're doing one where the employees actually have a financial incentive that they get a discount on their health insurance premium if they will participate in a wellness program that has some basic criteria. Uh, if they meet that criteria right off, they're in for a year. If they don't meet the criteria by meeting with a health care practitioner, we set up a plan for them to start to achieve that. And even if they don't achieve it, as long as they continue to work at it, they stay in the program, and so they're, they're saving money, they're getting better. The uh, employer benefits by having uh, healthier employees, less uh, sick days, and more productive employees while they're there because they feel better. we got more with Dr. Jonathan Tripp coming up in just a moment. It's 840 and 49. Dr. Jonathan Tripp joining us in studio. It's Better Health with Tripp Family Medicine coming up on 843, 50. Uh, Bill Colley with you as well, handling the telephones. And you're listening to uh, News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. Uh, the doctor is available if you have a question or comment, 736 0300. We're talking uh, general wellness today and some of the wellness programs that, in fact, many employers have instituted throughout, uh, throughout the Twin Falls area and the Magic Valley. And, and I guess uh, one place to jump off here, though, is to remind people that uh, you're looking for new patients. Always. And if they'd like to actually get in touch with you, there's a number of ways to do that. Yeah, let's start with our telephone number. It is uh, 208-933-4400. That's 933 And then we're on Facebook at Trip Family Medicine, as well as on our website is tripfamilymedicine.com, where you'll learn a lot of information about uh, our practice, the practitioners, uh, things that we do, which is pretty much everything except obstetrics. Uh, but, you know, some areas that we have some specialty focus, like dermatology and pediatrics, that shows up in there. Um, and as a new patient, uh, you can download the actual patient, new patient information, have that all ready to go rather than sitting in our lobby for 15 minutes filling out <laughs> paperwork ahead of time. So that's a convenient way to get things started. Um, you know, it's funny, we were, the intro music, if anybody was paying attention to that, was uh, the theme from Chariots of Fire, which is a running movie. So how perfect for a wellness you know, program to, we planned all the intro music, didn't we? Yes. Yeah, not, <laughs> not at all. Um, and then let me kind of give a unifying theme, to, at least in my opinion, on what we're doing with wellness in our clinic, whether it's at an employer or on your own, and that is, it's a start where you are and let's do something. Some of it is eating newer food, you know, new, maybe new foods to you, but basically foods that are whole foods, whether they are, uh, you know, salads or vegetables more frequently. In fact, what's really interesting is, you know, this isn't a plug for a certain place and it doesn't mean I was eating well because I'd argue that, but, you know, my son wanted Panda Express the other night. So we did that, but we got several entrees. And one of the entrees is their mixed vegetables, which have 
uh, from the taste, don't have much in the way of salt or anything on them. But bottom line is, I filled half of my plate with the vegetables and then used the other entrees that we had rather than the other way around. And I didn't load it with rice like I used to. So what I noticed is I've changed. I'm actually doing things better by trying to eat more vegetables, less processed foods. Uh, so those things, that's a place to begin. I mean, we lived in Oregon for a year and they ruined us by introducing us to green drinks. And boy, that's stuck with our family since. So that was something I never thought I would do prior to, you know, my wife bringing it in the house and saying, try this. And a few of the attempts were pretty big failures. <laughs> but, you know, she quickly became astute as to what works and what tastes good and still healthy for us. And that's been a big help for our family to, to learn some of those habits. Uh, you know, when you, when you mentioned this, I, I got thinking about a friend of mine uh, who sent me an email from Florida a few months back, and she had dropped up about 73 pounds because she was out. She, when she got to Florida, she could walk her dog more frequently than in longer distances and nicer weather than she could from where she lived in New Jersey, where they have a lot of bad storms, yeah, yeah. as it seems. Uh, and she, she was losing weight, but she also said that she changed her diet. She said breakfast was usually some apple slices, and maybe she topped them off with a little peanut butter, and then she wouldn't eat until later in the afternoon. And I said, well, did you get hungry? And she said, for about two weeks. But she said, after about two weeks, she said, I seem to adjust, and then I didn't get the hunger pangs any longer. And Yeah, and I've kind of had some of those similar feelings. I wish I could say I lost 73 pounds. If I did, I'd probably, you know... Be, you might not be here. Yeah, I'd be in trouble probably. <laughs> Even if it could be 33, it'd be pretty good. I think what she's saying is she started out by walking, then she started eating less, and she found out she didn't need to eat as much. That's that's kind of a revelation to me because I grew up in the household that, you know, you finish your plate and it wasn't a small plate, and so and it was always every activity was centered around well what are we going to do for food, and so often the activity was inhibited by making sure we had appropriate food available to us soon enough, and now my experience is really we probably could have figured out the food as we went and spent more time in the activity and less time on preparing the food. So those are changes that have happened for me over time. It didn't happen in one or two weeks even, but it is true that initial few days, not even weeks, but few days, your body makes a shift and says, you know, I think we're doing okay. There's another th uh, thought I had too about this. I used to live in a city where I could, I could walk to the grocery store from my house and I would, I would do that. And because of that, you can't, you can't bring as much home because you're carrying it in your hands. You're carrying it in your not, hands, not in the back of your SUV. Right, and 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 so uh, it, it it was a benefit I think to me at the time because you got the walking in, and uh, and if you ran out of food, you had to go back, so you had to make more frequent trips. So the walking became part of that that lifestyle. I you know since I've moved and I don't have that, that I don't have that ability. That, yeah. But but if you have if you can do that, that's probably not a bad approach to it. Oh, I think it's a great approach. Uh, Doing something is kind of my theme. So if I have somebody who's doing no walking, you know, they say, well, you know, I go to work and I'm tired when I come home. I will encourage them, go outside and walk for 20 minutes. I don't care if it's raining. If you just walk to begin with, you'll find out you actually like going out and doing this. It's a little bit of a meditation time. It, tell, it tends to let things uh, of the day fade away a little bit. So some, some mental health goes along with the physical exercise. And then I encourage them to start walking faster. So they have to huff and puff a little bit because 20 minutes of huffing and puffing, not to where you're really out of breath, but you have to take a, a little breath in the middle of what you're trying to say to complete your sentence, if I gave a good example there. Mm -hmm. That's enough to lower your blood sugars all day, to improve your calorie use all day, not just for the 20 minutes. And then you start to feel a little better after a week or two of doing that, and you're willing to try more. And so that motivation is a big deal. Now, there's things that we look at for deficiencies, like, is your thyroid in trouble? Are you anemic? Is your vitamin D low? So things like that will help improve your chances of being motivated, especially if there's a lot of anxiety or depression in your, in your life. That's something that needs to be worked on. And then once you help calm that, a lot of your motivation goes up. So wellness really encompasses not only how are you doing physically, how's your diet, but really says, how's my state of mind? And a lot of times, a little exercise improves that state of mind a lot. So that would be a promotion by me to say, let's do something. It doesn't say, hey, you're gung-ho. Let's sign you up. 
I don't mind gym memberships. They're great. You know, I have one and use it when I get around to it. So I'm like pretty much everybody else. But I wouldn't say, okay, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do four hours a day and that's my new commitment. If you do, you're my hero. But if you do 20 minutes and do it four or five times a week, that's a great beginning. 10 minutes away from 9 o'clock and it's 50. Dr. Jonathan Tripp joining us in studio. Better Health with Tripp Family Medicine. And you're listening to News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com with Bill Colley. Uh, a friend of mine, he's a retired Air Force colonel, about as crusty old fellow as you can get, probably okay. early 70s. And his okay. wife told him uh, about uh, six months ago to take up yoga. And he said, nothing that he would have ever considered. He always considered it to be a little exotic and strange. Yeah. yeah. But he said it has been perhaps the best workout. He had back issues. His back issues are gone. And uh, he said he has lost weight. So it, 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 it sometimes it comes down to what type of exercise you're getting, I would assume. Yeah. And a lot of people, uh, yoga has varying degrees of difficulty. So a lot of people will say, you know, oh, I'll give another example, Pilates. Pilates is mostly a core abdominal exercise that are usually done by, you know, women that are five foot two to five foot five and weigh about 98 pounds. At least that's what's on the videos. And so if you try to do those videos, they're all comfortable and cruising through it. And, you know, after about 10 seconds, you're thinking, how do they do this? Yeah. So it looks easy. <laughs> Yoga is kind of like that. It can be made to look very easy, very smooth, um, but can be extremely difficult. But what's nice is it's such a smooth motion that even joint problems and back problems you work through slowly and they start to improve because you're improving your range of motion. So yoga is a great one. Um, and, you know, I've, I've had some experience with that where I couldn't make it through a yoga video that I thought, oh, this will be easy. But they do have varying degrees of difficulty, and I'd say start where you are. Go easy. Let me kind of go back quickly to what we're doing with the uh, employer wellness programs. This started out with our experience with Lamb Weston, and they already had a program in place. We just became a place for their employees to go to get their blood work done, get their physical exam done on a yearly basis, which was a great support for us as a new practice several years ago. But what that has turned into is a program where they're seeing benefits because they've been doing it for several years now. Benefits for the employer from uh, how the workforce works at point of view, but the employees are actually doing better how do I know? Because I now see them as patients over a two or three year period and where some of them, you know, cholesterol was bad or their sugar was bad and things like that, their weight was too high. We've seen them try to improve and some do a little and some do a lot. Some are miracles. And so if you have a wellness program, I would encourage you to at least get in on it because it's a no one more motivation and there's a little camaraderie with other employees that are doing it that you can kind of work together towards a common goal for the, for your good. And if you're an employer or a manager considering doing this or are already doing one, I'd invite you to call us, let us help you not really administrate, but help through support that wellness program because uh, we've got some good experience there and what seems to work and what doesn't and appropriate guidelines. Um, so let me shift away from that now mm -hmm. to what is a wellness visit? Because that is a really confusing question mark to patients when they come to doctor's office. A lot of people have heard for years, you know, go get a checkup. Well, what the heck is a checkup? You know, so in my experience growing up, a checkup was, you know, well, that's the only time you go to the doctor. So you get everything checked out. You talk about any hangnail you have or any other worries, you know, what other health stuff. And that makes sense. That's common sense. But it is not what the wellness visit is according to your insurance plan. And that is the part that we struggle with because I would like to be able to do everything all at one time. Insurances say, no, 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 wellness is only a screening. We are only doing things to find if there's a problem. If you come in and talk to me about a cold or your blood pressure or your cholesterol or your trick knee, that now becomes a sick visit, according to the insurance, and they literally require me, under contract, to charge you for a wellness exam, because we did the wellness part of it, and a separate sick visit, which you have to now pay your copay, which you usually don't have to pay for a wellness visit. And I'll tell you what, every time, well, not every time, but frequently, patients are saying, wait a minute, I was here for my wellness exam. 
you know, the fact that we talked about my diabetes, hypertension, cholesterol, my j achy joints and my cold, that's just incidental. The insurance says, no, no, no. Wellness is just about screening, making sure that we're checking your heart, checking your lungs, you know, making sure that you don't have bad numbers on your laboratory stuff. So that's a tough one for the patient or the consumer to understand because it is driven by your insurance, not by the doctor, and not by the patient. Hate to say it, it's a good idea to do it, but for the person that only wants to show up once a year, it's a tough visit because you want to cover a lot of things, and your insurance is saying, no, that needs to be a separate visit. Whether it's the same day or not, they don't care. They just want to charge you both ways. So, And for a lot of people, though, that, that visit, at least can you can get a look at them, though, and maybe make some determinations. You know, and having just said what I said, how the insurance drives it, does a doctor or a healthcare practitioner look at you and say, oh, I'm not even going to talk about your blood pressure that's through the roof? Of course they are. They should, you know, because we're, we're really here to try to promote, what do we talk about today? Wellness. So to say, yes, I've done your screening, you're about to die, let's not talk anymore, that's <laughs> probably not going to happen. You know, and if somebody says, you know, can you look at this wart or this mole, I'm worried about it? <clears throat> Almost never are we charging a separate exam for that. Why? Because if we need to do something about it, we're probably going to bring you back anyway to do that, and it will be a separate visit. So, yes, I don't want you to feel like when you come in for wellness, you can't talk about anything, but it's a little heads up that your insurance is driving what's going on in the background more than I am. We should repeat your contact information again for folks uh, who are tuning in this morning. Sure. It is uh, 208 for the telephone, 208 933 4400. That's 933 4400. Our website is tripfamilymedicine.com. And on Facebook, we're at Trip Family Medicine. And we'd love to hear comments or background. Uh, we've had some great testimonials. I, I love it because none of them are solicited, but uh, I'm, they're almost so strong when I hear them or have them read to me. I'm a little embarrassed because I think we're just trying to do good work. And uh, sometimes it sounds like we're, we're uh, doing miracles. Uh, good question. Uh, any uh, idea on the topic for next week? Oh, you're asking me hard questions, but, it, <laughs> but it's going to be good. It will be good. It'll be really good. We'll know that All in right. the next uh, couple of days. I want to thank right. Dr. Jonathan Tripp for dropping by this morning. Better Health with Tripp Family Medicine right here on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. And have a better health day. That's a great line. <laughs> See, he, he, he's, a, he's, a, he's also a linguist as well. <laughs> that literature you had to take in college That's paid right, off. That's right, yeah.